Hello and very warm welcome to the Rise interview, 60 minutes of big questions about the big stories from the news and beyond with fresh insights and critical analysis. I am Christian Nogodo, we're live in Nigeria's capital, Abuja. Coming up in the next hour, globally, these are unusual times as the coronavirus pandemic keeps ravaging, changing status quo. Nigeria's electoral umpire says it will hold elections during the COVID-19 pandemic. The elections at hand at the governorship polls in Edo and Ondo states and four postponed by elections. For these elections to hold, the electoral umpire has released a policy framework. We'll speak to a commissioner in the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to get more insights. And later, 2020 is the year the guns will fall silent in Africa, part of Africa's blueprint for its long-term socio-economic and integrative transformation to achieve a conflict-free continent, prevent genocide, make peace a reality and rid the continent of wars, of violent extremism, human rights violations and humanitarian disasters. But the COVID-19 pandemic seems to desire a new kind of approach as African leaders still push towards silencing the guns in search of peace and security. World assess areas of concern in 2020 and the Africa Day coming up in a moment. For the elections to hold, the Independent National Electoral Commission, the body in charge of elections here in Nigeria, has released guidelines for voters during the COVID-19 pandemic. The policy framework is to enable INEC officials and voters to understand and respond adequately to the challenges of conducting elections in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Commission says it will work with the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 in its new election budget templates to reflect the likely impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the funding profile of electoral activities. The plan covers health and legal issues, election planning and operations, election day and post-election activities, voters' registration, political parties, election observation, electoral security and deployment of technology in the context of the novel coronavirus. In view of the extensive impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the electoral process in Nigeria, the Independent National Electoral Commission has designed a policy to guide the conduct of elections and the electoral activities of the Commission during the COVID-19 pandemic. The policy highlights the Commission's response in key components of the electoral process. They include planning elections, legal framework, electoral operations, pre-election, election day and post-election day activities, and also ICT and voter registration, training, voter education and stakeholder engagement, political parties and election observation, securing the electoral process. In order to protect voters, election officials and other stakeholders in the electoral process, the Commission shall implement the following. Infrared thermometers will be supplied and used at the registration area collation centers, the local government area collation centers, and the state collation centers. The use of face mask is mandatory for everyone involved in the election process and must be worn at all election locations. The Commission shall provide face masks for all election officials. Alcohol-based hand sanitizers will be provided for election officials at the polling units. Mentholated spirit and cotton wool will be provided for the disinfection of the smart card readers after the fingerprints of each voter is read. The rules of fiscal distancing shall be enforced at all election activities including stakeholder engagements, training, queuing at polling units. All protocols issued by the NCDC, Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, the State Committees on COVID-19 and all the relevant health authorities shall be observed by election officials and all stakeholders. 
The Commission shall work with the PTF and the health authorities to have in place a system of voluntary COVID-19 testing for INEC staff before and after deploying for elections. As already announced by the Commission, the days for the governorship elections in Edo and Ondo states shall remain 19 September 2020 and 10 October 2020 respectively. Days for the four postponed by-elections in Bayesa, Imo and Plateau State, as well as all the by-elections will be announced by the Commission following its established procedures. Well, that's uh, a video guideline from the Independent National Electoral Commission there. And for more on this, I've now been joined by Barrister Festus Okoye. He's the National Commissioner, Voters, Education and Publicity of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Very warm welcome and nice seeing you again on the Arise interview. Thank you so much. Now, can you tell us what um, informed these new guidelines released by INEC even during this uh, pandemic uh, virus? You still insist you'll be conducting elections. Did you carry stakeholders along? Well, uh, there are two issues involved um, in this new policy. Uh, the first issue is that we are faced with a constitutional issue. Uh, section 178, subsection 2, of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, as well as Section 25, subsection uh, 7 and 8 of the Electoral Act 2010, as amended, insists that we must conduct governorship, end of tenure governorship elections within a certain period. Mm -hmm. And it says that we shall not conduct the said elections earlier than 150 days before the tenure uh, of the incumbent ends, and not later than 30 days before the end of that tenure. The implication is that for the do governorship elections, we must conduct the election on or before the 13th day of October um, 2020. While for the on the governorship elections, we must conduct it on or before the 25th day of January 2021. So we are faced with a constitutional issue. Uh, the constitution has circumscribed uh, the ambit within which we can operate. So that is the first one. The second one is that we also have some other by-elections uh, that have occurred uh, since the coronavirus pandemic uh, broke out. Uh, so the, the issue now is that we are faced with fulfilling our constitutional mandate and obligations and also making sure that we protect the health of the citizens of this country. Uh, so that was what informed us sitting back, reflecting, and then designing a new policy framework that will enable us to understand the, this uncertain terrain, this novel issue, and also enable us to um, conduct elections under these difficult circumstances. Very well said. But uh, did you carry key stakeholders along in formulating these guidelines? Were the uh, political parties part of this exercise? Well, uh, the, 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 the Constitution and the Electoral Act uh, gives the Independent National Electoral Commission the exclusive right uh, to conduct elections and also the exclusive right to monitor the operation of political parties. So what we have done is to design a policy framework that will guide us going towards this election. But in designing that policy framework, we also want to have a, what I call an inclusive and consultative approach to this policy. So based on that, we have um, scheduled a meeting uh, with uh, political parties for the first day of June uh, 2020. Then on the second day of June 2020, we are also going to have a meeting with uh, civil society groups and organizations. I'm sure those will be virtually conducted. Uh, partly virtually conducted and partly um, uh, conducted uh, through um, the normal orthodox... Uh, human uh, to human... Yes. Uh, yes. yes. So, okay. so what we are going to do is that we are going to present this policy document to political parties, civil society groups and organizations, to the media and to the security agencies and have a robust discussion with them relating to this policy. The commission does not have all the answers to the, these issues. So we are also going to harvest suggestions, recommendations from them and then use Incorporate those into this guidelines. Yes, to improve on the conduct of elections okay. going forward. Yes. Okay, that's, that's great. I, I just uh, looked at the guidelines and yes. discovered that... Uh, the commission is not coming up with the continuous voters registration 
um, you'll be disenfranchising those who will be attaining the voting age yes. of, is it 17 or thereabout, 18, or 18? 18, 18 yes. You understand? Yes. Uh, how uh, good is this? Well, uh, these are unusual times. Um, and this coronavirus uh, is, is a novel thing. Um, it is not the intention of the commission to disenfranchise anybody. Our intention is to make sure that we get as many of our uh, citizens as possible who are ready to vote, who are ready to register, to register and vote. But we are faced with a, a very unusual situation. And because of this unusual situation, we have decided as a commission not to go ahead with any form of registration of voters at this point in time. And we have also decided that even the issue of collection of permanent voters cards that remain uncollected from the previous elections will not take place. Uh, we need to protect the health of the citizens. We need to limit the level of human contact that people have with some of our officials. But you'll, be, get to the but you'll be disenfranchising these people. You cited the constitutional provision, which yes. says section 178, yes. you know, which stipulates uh, the time frame under yes. which you must conduct election. I'm sure there is a provision, too, that it's the civic responsibility and duties that must not be denied of the people. No, so I, why, are you not, why is the commission not coming up with a novelty? Well, uh, we, we will come up with a novelty. But for this particular period, we believe that we cannot pull through this specific voters registration exercise at this point in time. But you know, the, the constitution, what the constitution provides is a continuous voters registration and not really a state specific voters registration exercise. What uh, you are asking us to do now in a do and on do is to do state specific voters registration exercise to take care of those who have attained the age of 18 uh, in Edo and in Ondo State. Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, we, wouldn't, we would have done that. But we are faced with an unusual situation. And because of this unusual situation, we are still trying to understand uh, how to meander. Because these are uncharted territory, uncharted uh, 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 period. So what we are trying to do is that we will even use a smaller election, a small by election, mm -hmm. to do a test run to see how we are going to handle the do governorship elections and don't do governorship elections. So, so we, we understand the fact that uh, some people have attained the age of 18, they would love to vote, but because of the uncharted territory we are in, because of this unusual uh, uh, pandemic, uh, we will not be in a position to do state-specific voters registration at this point in time. Okay, very well said. I just hope uh, the people will understand and not want to challenge uh, that in court. But uh, Festus, you're still going to stay with us. We want to take some messages and when we come back, we'll look at logistics issues. We'll look at electronic voting and other parameters of the guidelines. Very well. You're still watching the Arise interview. We've got plenty more still ahead. Stay with us. You're welcome back to the Arise interview, and I still have uh, the Commissioner for Voters Education and Publicity, uh, Barrister Festus Okoye. A well thought out and detailed 17 page document on conducting elections in the context of the COVID 19 pandemic has been released by INEC, as we said earlier. The electoral body says it will test run electronic voting machines at the earliest possible time and have a full introduction of the system in major elections starting from 2021. The pilot phase will not include the upcoming elections in Edo and Ondo states. INEC says it will reassess ex uh, exiting security threats across the states where elections will be held and also observe all the protocols for COVID-19. Let's once again turn to Festus Okoye. I was going to start with the kind of logistics problems you're going to have uh, during these unusual times. I mean, logistics has always been, you know, a very big bane to the commission because of, you know, the country's terrain and what have you. How are you going to cope with that? Just two states, anyway, that you're conducting these elections, but uh, they are, you know, uh, rugged uh, states, although crisscrossed with the Atlantic Ocean and uh, various tributaries. So, how are you working this out? 
Well, uh, our, our hope and prayer is that as we are moving towards these elections, uh, the health authorities will have, uh, uh, to a certain extent, contained this pandemic. Uh, so to that extent, what we intend that to is, do... That is the hope. That's the hope, yes. <laughs> we, we, are, we, are, we are very hopeful. You okay. know, but life is built around hope. Mm. Uh, so uh, what, what we intend to do is that uh, since these are state-specific elections, uh, we can draw uh, expertise, we can draw logistics from the contiguous states, uh, bordering some of these states. Uh, so to that particular extent, we are not going to have very serious challenges with uh, uh, non-sensitive materials. Uh, but we are looking at a situation where we may have a uh, few challenges with uh, transportation, uh, given the uh, issue of physical and social distancing uh, that is at play now. Uh, our buses used to carry at least 14 ad hoc staff to the pooling units. Now they will have to carry seven. So the implication is that we have to hire more buses. The implication also is that we have to also uh, impute uh, the issue of provision of hand sanitizers uh, uh, into the contract we are going to enter into uh, with the uh, bus drivers or the bus owners. Uh, we are also going to hire boats because parts of uh, a do and non do. Um, um, a river Rhine a, area. A river Rhine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and they, we are going to also reduce the number of passengers the boats carry. Uh, so that will also increase the cost. Uh, so the issue of increased, increased cost relating to transportation is there. There's also the whole issue about the ad hoc staff. The bulk of our presiding officers are drawn from uh, serving core members. Uh, and then when there's a shortfall... And they're all at home now because of the COVID-19. Yes. When there's a shortfall, we draw from uh, uh, students of federal tertiary institutions. Uh, so what we're going to do is that we're going to work very closely with uh, the authorities of the NYSC. And also, we're also going to rely on our own database uh, containing the, the, the list addresses and telephone numbers of uh, past core members who have served the commission. Uh, so we have a database. So and the, all the applications uh, relating uh, to those who want to serve as, as ad hoc staff will be done electronically. Uh, so, um, uh, but if there's any shortfall, if there are any challenges, we have mapped out a contingency plans on how to deal with those challenges. Okay, that's uh, very uh, gladdening to note. Definitely you'll be working uh, hand in hand with the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, yeah. uh, particularly when it concerns health issues around uh, all participants uh, at the elections. Is that correct? Yes, um, at, the, at the state level, uh, we, the resident electoral commissioners of the two states have been directed uh, to work with the health authorities within the state. At the level of the national headquarters, uh, we are going to integrate an official from the presidential uh, tax force uh, into the interagency consultative committee on election security uh, for purposes of advising us on health issues. But ultimately, the commission remains the driver of this particular process. We are going to receive advice. We are going to also consult but the main decision relating to going forward with this election will be taken by the commission. Okay, that's great. Now, let's uh, talk about another key issue in this policy document that will interest Nigerians a lot. Electronic voting. You want to start test running it from 2021? What are the preparations on ground now? We are preparing. Uh, the first is that there has to be um, a legislative backup uh, for the introduction of electronic uh, voting and electronic transmission of results. Um, just before the, uh, 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 we shut down the commission, um, we had an interaction, a consultative meeting with the leadership of uh, the House Committee on, uh, on, INEC. on INEC and the, uh, I mean the Senate Committee on INEC and yeah. the House Committee on Electoral Matters in Lagos. And uh, we practically agreed on certain areas. Uh, there was a consensus on certain areas and the introduction of uh, electronic voting one, was one of those areas where we have a consensus. So but the, the framework, the, the, the legal framework, has not been cleaned up. So we need a, a new legal framework to bring into being the whole issue about um, electronic voting. And then there's also the whole issue around procurement and the lockdown in some of the uh, big countries where some of these equipment are, are produced. But we are hopeful and we are confident uh, that we have what it takes uh, to move Nigeria away uh, from our present state into an electronic age. And we are committed to doing that. 
Very good. I mean, nice uh, commitment. Nigerians, again, would be very happy with the kind of uh, progressive steps you're uh, making and taking, just for the legislators now to fine-tune the legal framework. Yes. I, I just want to, I, I hope we won't be jumping the gun if I ask you to just uh, tell us if the commission is not going to be collaborating with uh, NMIC, that is the National Identity Management uh, uh, Commission, uh, the Nigerian Communications Commission, commission yes. uh, the Ministry of uh, Communications and Digital Economy, because yes. these are uh, agencies of government and ministries that you need to get the kind of collaboration that you're having. And even maybe uh, the CBN and the bank, so that, you know, with my card, I can just do my voting anywhere. I don't need to go to any polling station. Are you thinking of that? This collaboration has been ongoing for, uh, for, for quite a while. Uh, we've been collaborating with all these agencies you talked about. Mm. And the issue of um, um, uh, electronic transmission of results and, um, and electronic collation of results, uh, we've been piloting some of these things for, uh, for a while. Uh, and we, uh, I want to tell you that the Independent National Electoral Commission has, one of the, has a very robust database that is even bigger and much more stronger than the database of so many of the agencies you have, you have, you have mentioned. Uh, so what we are just um, waiting to go, we are waiting for the legal framework um, at the level of the commission uh, through our ICT department and through the electoral operations. We have um, sorted out all the logistics involved in uh, introducing electronic voting into the country. Uh, so the moment we have the legal framework and we sort out the issue of procurement, we'll be ready to go. So 2023 is even going to be a must that Nigerians are going to vote, one, electronically and results transmitted electronically. We are working towards that. Good news again. Now, while working towards that, uh, your policy document says that the commission uh, would develop a voter code of conduct document detailing how voters are respected to act and conduct themselves in the light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes. How do you hope to enforce this? We know that in previous elections, particularly the last general elections, uh, we saw a very solid uh, situation. The kind of uh, display by security agents, you know, leaves uh, much to be desired in the conduct of elections in this country. So are you going to enforce this? You know, the conduct of elections is a multi-stakeholder venture. And that's why it we is strictly your business. Y yes. You invite others. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, you are the only one the law recognizes. Yes, I will, yeah. I will, I will explain. Please do. It's a multi-stakeholder venture. The law gives different agencies certain powers and certain functions within the electoral framework. For instance, the Independent National Electoral Commission does not have the power to maintain law and order. It is the function of the Nigerian police force, which is the lead agency in election security. That is why we have the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security, comprising of almost all the security agencies in Nigeria, and we are going to bring the head authorities into, into that particular um, um, Interagency Consultative Committee. For the first time. Yes. Now, the political parties also have a role to play because they also have their own supporters, civil society groups and organizations and the media. So we are going to have a robust conversation and robust consultation with all these agencies and all these organs towards having a good election. Now, we will continue to appeal. We are going to use the electronic means. We are going to use the social media. We are going to use traditional and non-traditional means in getting the voters aware of what is expected to, of them during this particular period. Because if we go to the polling units and we have a rowdy situation, there's going to be a problem. So we are going to create what we call an inner codon and an outer codon at the polling units. And we are going to use twine and other means to make sure that we enforce it. And then we are also going to train the security agencies on this new situation and how they will conduct themselves and how they will uh, approach the voters around this particular period. And we are also going to have uh, a protocol on how to uh, deal with uh, not how to deal with, uh, how to handle a voter who shows uh, symptoms of COVID-19, especially at the polling un unit. So we are going to um, 
test run some of these things, maybe with a small election, and then we see the lessons we are going to learn from it uh, before we go to conduct the do governorship elections. Okay, that's where, uh, apart from the health officials, uh, yes. just like you said, that's where the PTF comes in handy too, uh, so that its uh, protocols are observed, social distancing and exactly. the rest. Ex exactly. We are going to make sure that um, we observe all the health protocols because the safety of the voters is very, very important. And the safety of our own officials conducting these elections uh, is also very, very paramount. We want to fulfill our constitutional mandate and at the same time protect the health of the individuals conducting these elections and also the health of the voters. We are trying to look for a balance and uh, that balance um, is imperative and it's a task that must be done. Yes, it's a task that must be done. We look forward to uh, how INEC, you know, is going to achieve all the set goals in the guidelines for the Edo and Ondo state uh, governorship election. Festus Okoye, very warm appreciation for coming on the Arise interview. Thank you so much. That was Festus Okoye. He's the commissioner in charge of voters' education and publicity, Independent National Electoral Commission of Nigeria. You're still watching the Arise interview. We've got more still ahead. Stay with us.